Hi everyone, welcome to Understand Heart, where we learn about anything and everything heart related. Today, I will be providing an update throughout the last few months as I haven't been posting any videos and discussing my slight career change. So continue listening if you are interested to find out what happened and what drove my final decision to drop the cardiology training number. So let's start with the update. Between April to July, I spent most of my time when not working as a doctor, writing my thesis and preparing for my PhD Viva. On the 24th of July, I had the dreaded Viva through a Zoom call, which was, should I say, weird as I would never in a thousand years pictured myself having the final exam in my own living room. Fortunately, everything went smoothly and I passed with minor corrections. Within a few weeks time, my amendment was sent and approved and I was awarded my degree through the mailbox, which was a little anticlimactic. During this time, I was approached to consider a slightly different career path, being a clinical lecturer. I spent a lot of time reading and understanding the differences between a clinical lecturer and the more mainstream cardiology trainee. As this was a once in a lifetime opportunity, I decided to apply for it. Shortly after moving our life to Hereford to start my new SD3 training post, I was shortlisted and had the interview date set. The interview went well and I was offered the job. After informing the relevant bodies of my decision to leave the current training post, I started preparing for the clinical lecturer job, which involved several Zoom calls, arranging to move my life to Liverpool, and continuing to gain training and clinical experience in the SD3 post, all in the midst of the second and third lockdown in the UK. You won't believe the amount of stress involved, but finally, at the start of the new year, I moved to Wiro to start this new journey. I'm currently three weeks in, so I'm definitely still trying to get used to the new role. Once I get into some sort of routine, I will provide an overview of what the job is like, including the pros and cons. So how did I make the decision to switch my job? My thought process when it comes to making the choice can be split into a few categories. Training duration, training location, work-life balance, and long-term outlook. One of the first things that came to my mind was the training time. Being a clinical lecturer naturally means that the training time is doubled. This would mean that instead of the five years to complete training, I will have to do 10 years. Obviously, this was an important factor as this means that I will be further away from my goal to becoming a consultant. However, as training in the UK is competency based, this would mean that I can progress in a similar speed as other trainees if I can show evidence of progression. As I have had experience in my previous jobs, I can leverage this experience to a normal progression. Therefore, training time was not a big issue in my perspective. Secondly, with regards to the training location, being a clinical lecturer provides me with a little more stability in the choice of workplace as I would need to be in centres where there are research activity for me to continue my training in academia. Whereas as a mainstream clinical trainee, I would have less a say in where I go next. This would mean a more stable life which I quite look forward to after 10 years of renting and moving around the whole of UK. The third point was looking into work-life balance. A lot of people think that being in academia means poorer work-life balance and having to give up a lot of free time to keep up to date with the latest research. From my point of view, I looked at it as having flexibility with my own time, where there are weeks I can work harder and other weeks where I can have a little more downtime, especially if I had a bad set of on-calls. It also gives me the opportunity to escape either side. When I'm tired of clinical duties, I can escape into research and focus on my research studies and when I'm bored of research, I can jump back into the clinical side. Lastly is considering the long-term outlook of the career choice. I think deciding on a long-term goal is always very difficult. When I initially got interested in cardiology, I always thought that I would be doing intervention or stenting. But as I grow older and progress in the field, I learned that other areas of cardiology seemed as interesting as well. 
Similarly, I never would have pictured myself as a researcher, but pursuing my PhD has given me a different view of research. I could see myself getting involved in research more in the future and hence, by taking up this job, I could give myself more exposure to the field of research. Now that I have lesser on-call commitments, I have a little more time and therefore am planning to put more effort into this channel. To allow me to post more consistently, I have decided on the easier format of a podcast with minimal video editing. Hopefully, the subscribers to the channel will still enjoy the content and follow me on my journey within cardiology research and training. Apart from sharing my journey and exploring what goes on in the life of a clinical lecturer, I also hope to share my knowledge and insights into papers which I have read if anyone enjoys this kind of content. I also hope to interact more with the viewers, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. Lastly, I want to thank the first few subscribers and commenters to my channel. You are partly the reason why I decided to restart this channel. If you find this podcast interesting, please like, share and subscribe. I will hope to continue sharing my thoughts and my journey through this platform. If you would like to get in touch, email or DM me on my social media platform. Thank you for joining me.